Do you remember our discussion? Of course not. It was perhaps a clumsy way of starting a conversation. I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. Despite what Marjolaine says, I am not like her. I know that now. I have found peace in knowing the Maker, and nothing will change that. I've followed you to make the world a better place, and as long as I keep that in mind, I will not fall. Sometimes, it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. Maybe. You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? It has been some time since I left Lothering. When I stepped out of the cloister, I had no idea where my path would lead. I walked where the Maker led me, and he has rewarded me for my faith. I found you. <laughs> yes, talk of the Maker is hardly romantic, is it? But now it's getting late. I think I might turn in early. I can't help thinking about how soft and warm my bedroll is. You're welcome to join me, of course. The Maker says we must share our blessings. Good. Now come with me before I lose my patience. Hello. I was watching you sleep. Did you know your eyelids flutter when you dream? And you have such pretty eyelashes. So I hear. I'm so happy, blissful. I haven't slept so well since I was forced to flee from Orlais. Knowing you will be the first thing I see when I wake gives me no small amount of comfort. I feel safe in your arms. Safe, loved and accepted. This is where I belong. Thank you. I suppose I should get up. We have a long day ahead of us. Come on! Darkspawn await with bated breath for you to put them out of their misery. What are you... Oh, I see. Mm hmm. I suppose the Darkspawn will just have to wait a bit longer. Alright guys, welcome to set 6 of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins, my rogue playthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed the little love making scene at the beginning. Um, if I remember to head it in, which I should. Um, I had found out that I could romance Liliana to the top, so, well, I made her on top. <laughs> um, that being said, I did do a few things off screen. I went around and did shite. I went back to Denerim and got my dragon armor. I uh, glitched it on so I could equip it, but uh, technically I shouldn't be able to equip this armor right now. Because I don't have that defense. Now, how I did this was, I went out and about, and I found um, materials that I could equip that drastically increased my strength up to... 20, I believe it was? 20. And then I equipped it, and then I basically put everything back to normal. This allows me to equip things I shouldn't be able to equip, so long as I don't unequip it. <laughs> um, it's very helpful for getting things done like this, so, yeah. But I have everything I need done and ready to go. I also found this Ring of Ages inside the um, magical shop in Denerim. <laughs> it's pretty much my belt. It's actually uh, better than my belt. Shit. But this now gives me a natural plus 25% uh, defense against any of the elements. 
including my armor, which brings me up to about 60, I believe it was, for fire. 60 it is. So yeah, it's uh, really fucking helpful. I love it. I also equipped my Oath Keeper, or whatever it's called, with the uh, f uh, Grandmaster Fire Rune. Which allows me to have a flaming sword and an ice sword, or ice dagger, which uh, I think looks really cool. Nice contrast. <clears throat> Alright, that being said, let us continue on with the uh, initial charts, chats, and let's talk to Alistair, because he has something for us. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon, and when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Grey Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. Of course. Anything else? Something on your mind? Not unless they were asking me for a favor. Well, there was that one time in Denerim. But those women were <laughs> not like you. Why? Is this your way of telling me you think I'm handsome? Just idle conversation, huh? Not flirting at all. <laughs> Alright then. Have it your way. I just fucked a sister. Shut up. <laughs> Stan, you have something for us as well. You called. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. That is complicated. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Kalanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the dark spawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead. Nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers. And my sword was gone from my hand. I searched for it, and when that failed, I asked my rescuers what had become of it. They said they found me with nothing. I killed them with my bare hands. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now.
What would you have me do? It could be anywhere by now. Near Lake Callanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. Okay, this basic principle is pretty interesting to me. Um, the Quinari have a very strict right for their warriors. They have a sword, and that's their sword. No other Quinari can we are allowed to wield it except for the one it was forged for. This is very samurai-esque, in my opinion. Um, although, there is still a bit of interesting bits about the samurai that a lot of people misunderstand, but I'm not going into that because I could spend an entire hour talking about that. <clears throat> Needless to say, him without his sword is like you without your arm. He just doesn't, he feels wrong without it. So, we're gonna go find it. <clears throat> okay. Is everyone yet for us? When you have something for us. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Leliana is a remarkable girl, sincere and guileless, and she has opened her heart to you. I would not like to see her hurt. Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here. For one, or both of you. You are a Grey Warden. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Love is ultimately selfish. It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? Nothing is certain. Not in these times. You cannot take anything for granted. I want you to be aware of this. If you insist, I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. I know you mean well, but shut the fuck up, bitch. I'll fuck the sister if I want to. Hm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, um, let's see here. Liliana. Um, Shale. And... When? We're gonna go stop by, uh, Flemeth's place. Okay, that darkness at the bottom, that you see just sort of oozing there, makes me think of Darkspawn just rising up. Alright, we're gonna do this first real quickly before we continue onwards, and a few other things outside, then we'll go on. <clears throat> knew there'd be a fight here, I just knew it! Yeah, this is this dark spawn is uh, spawning up here now. Damn, they're getting uh, feisty. Right. Yo. Let's go up there. Oh, hello. Walk for death. Yo. Come on. Spin. Doi. Clears down. I'll take care of the little piss ants shooting arrows at me. Back step. Back step. Hi. I'm gonna kill you now, okay? Okay. Hi, Shale. She currently has lightning uh, attached to her attacks, which is really cool. That's a trap. Just about to lose. Herlock. 
I'm probably way too under level to, f to uh, face up the Flemeth. If she fights, I might be able to convince her not to attack me. We'll have to see if we get to that. <clears throat> Corpse. Alright then. Ooh, Alfred, thank you. Shrooms. Let's do a quick save. Alfred. thought I was... I thought it was all over. I... I will explain everything when we are back at camp. Now is not the time. Um... Is that something you're not telling us? Let's right, so over to you. I guess then I'll need fire protection and ice. I know a bit about Flemeth, and uh, this is probably coloring how this is going to work out, but we'll see. I seriously exp I think that is just a bunch of darkspawn. Just blighting the path. <clears throat> also, very worried about when. Oh, there's the old lady. Wrong item. Talent, steel. This thing failed. I shall. Damn. And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her too. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? Why dance at all? Why not sing? <laughs> what has Morrigan told you? Hmm? What little plan has she hatched this time? Composing your own tune, then. Now there's something even I can dance to. <laughs> that you have come at all means you desire something. Perhaps I may yet give it to you. Morrigan wishes my grimoire? Take it as a trophy. Tell her I am slain. I go. Perhaps I surprise Morrigan one day. Or I may simply watch. It would be interesting to see what she does with her freedom. Enlightening, even. Would you give an old woman that? We believe what we want to believe. It's all we ever do. It's far easier this way, don't you think? The lies are always more fun. Not killing Morrigan's mother. That is the more noble choice, right? Right? A tangled web you weave, Warden. I hope it's for good cause. The book is inside the hut, with notes and spells enough to make even Morrigan blush with delight. You and I will not meet again. That I guarantee. Yeah, I know. Hmm. They really want me to fight Morgan's mother, or fight Flemeth, huh? Change your mind already. I change knickers less quickly. Wouldn't we all, alas? 
As can you. It's a shame no one ever lives up to their true potential, isn't it? Back to this again. Sabres rattling and jaws firmly planted on the floor. Oh, do something. It is a dance poor Flemeth knows well. Let us see if she remembers the steps. Come. She will earn what she takes. I'd have it no other way. Just to show you what happens if you fight her. Let's see if we actually can fight her. If she, if she doesn't kill us. Which I can see she's gonna probably do. Yep. Okay, I'm not gonna survive that, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna take the book that way. Uh, by talking. Um, one of my future, one of my other characters will fight Flemeth. Not saying which, so feel free to, uh, watch the videos and find out for yourself which one does it. I know, I know, I'm such a bastard that way, aren't I? Not telling you which one's gonna kill the old witch or not. That's honestly, Shoko wouldn't kill Flemeth. Not unless she was forced to. And so you return. I got all this. Morrigan has at last found someone. What? What has Morrigan told you? Hmm? What? Come. That you... Morrigan wishes my grimoire. I can do that. Not killing Mor. The. All right. Thank you. All over now. All right, then. That was fun. All right, what's in the oh. chest? Robes of possession. Let's see. <laughs> Negative one willpower. Fuck. Pretty good robes, though. The original intent of these robes is clear. A welcome home present for, from Flemeth. Designed to sap Morgan's will and cause the ancient sorcerer's possession of her daughter. With Flemeth dead, these roads no longer pose a danger to Morgan, but make her help those who get in her way. Um. Done. She's not. Whatever! <laughs> can only Morgan equip him? Only Morgan can equip him. I'm just kind of curious what they look like. Well, now I know what's in that chest! <laughs> now I knew Flemeth had the key. So yeah, I knew I knew that was kind of knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> All right, when what the fuck was that about? Why did you pass out on me? I think I own explanation for what happened earlier. You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. You spoke to Petra, did you not? She told you I saved her from a demon. I did, but I did not survive that encounter. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back 
firmly but gently as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contains spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. I do not know. I can feel when the spirit weakens, so I should have fair warning. But come, let us not talk about this. There is time yet. What's on your mind? I have watched you for a time, and perhaps I was wrong. There seems to be something special between the two of you. I think she feels she's truly found her place with you. That after all her wanderings, she's finally home. I think I was too harsh in my judgment before, and I am sorry. What you have may not last forever. Death and duty may part you, but love's worthiness is not diminished because of that. I should have seen this before. Instead, you learn to cherish every precious moment that you spend together, knowing that it may be the last. And for those of us watching, well, it brings warmth to these old bones to know that something so beautiful can be found in the midst of chaos and strife. What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams, because I knew they were there. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance, and I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden, and help prepare her for the task that is yet before her. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right. 
even without my help. I like Gwen. She's very distinguished. All right. Uh, let's give Lemus Grimoire to uh, Morgan. This should be interesting. Let's see what these robes of possession look like on her, by the way. Oh! Are they any better than their current robes? Plus 5 magic, plus 10 defense, 12 resistance, cold damage. They actually are! It gets rid of one point of uh, willpower, but everything else is pretty good. I'll have to keep them. Plus, they look really good. I love I love Morgan's um, original robe designs. Not because I'm a pervert, because I am, but also because it looks nice. Okay. There are. There you are. Here you go. Mother's real grimoire, is it? I am glad you were able to find it after all. My thanks for retrieving it. I shall begin studying it immediately and unlock the power that it holds. Awesome! Anything good? It is a curious thing. I do not know how else to describe it. <laughs> that would be rather unlikely, would it not? I am reminded of our first meeting in the wilds. I had been in animal form for some time, watching your progress. I was intrigued to see such a formidable woman, obviously more potent than the men she traveled with. Yet I resented it when Flemeth assigned me to travel with you. I assumed that at best you would drive me from your company as soon as we left the wilds. I am aware that I have little talent for forming friendships, to put it lightly. It is something I know nothing of, nor ever thought I needed. Yet when I discovered Flemeth's plans, you did not abandon me. Whatever your reasons, you fought what must have been a terrible battle without hope of real reward. The extent of my usefulness does not explain the interest and kindness you have shown since the wilds. You could as easily have ignored me entirely, yet you did not. You will need to forgive me for speaking so awkwardly, but do you suppose that we have become friends, you and I? I have nothing to compare it to. No, oh, that's adorable. Indeed. Remarkable. Of all the things I could have imagined would have resulted when Flemeth told me to go with you, the very last would have been that I would find in you a friend, perhaps even a sister. I want you to know that while I may not always prove worthy of your friendship, I will always value it. But enough of such idle talk. There are more useful things to be done, surely. Aww. That's so sweet! Morgan has emotions. Alright, she also has some nice upgrades, too. Let's see here. <clears throat> Shit! Spider Boy Lucia, the party has gained a minor bonus. Moderate. Major. Massive. Shit! So basically, Morgan just goes, achoo, and a mountain blows up. <laughs> I like it. Let's do a quick save again, because I'm. <laughs> I'm worried I'm gonna go fuck something I'm worried I'm gonna fuck something up. Anything else? You realize that you've been smiling for hours now. Not at all, but you are acting quite the fool. Since the last time you and that girl shot glances at each other, in fact. I cannot imagine what you begin to see in her. I hope at least the dalliance is worthwhile. I see. <laughs> Glad to hear it then. Tis a bit 
sickening to watch you two, but I imagine it at least takes your mind from our situation. Have it your way. What comes, my friend? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Alright then. I got a friend with Morgan. Yay! Um, okay. That's about it for that, so let's actually get the fuck out of here. Run! Alright then. Morgan, Liliana, and... Shale. Yes.